games are back, Andy. Great. Finally. Where have they been? We're talking about the October games. They've been they've been Hi hiding, hiding underground. Uh, hibernating. Hi yep. Lurking in the shadows. But no longer. They're ready to pop out of those shadows and jump into your games consoles and PC computers. Here are the games coming out in October this year. Ooh. <laughs> Amicia and Hugo are back for another gruelling slog through 14th century France. <laughs> so if that sounds... Games are back, everyone. <laughs> Great news. Amicia and Hugo are back for another gruelling slog through 14th century France in A Plague Tale Requiem. This stealth action game looks visually stunning and is a sequel to surprise hit A Plague Tale Innocence, which impressed players with its rat physics. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I generally try and list them in sort of chronological order. Maybe this, maybe this was a slightly bleak one to open. <laughs> Look, the thing is... <laughs> the thing is, games are bad. <laughs> uh, did you play A Plague Tale Innocent Sandy? Uh, yes, I did. It oh, was you did? bleak. It was extremely bleak and harrowing. How about those rat physics? They were pretty good, though. Yeah, yeah. they were more like sort of water in the game. Just yes. knee, knee high, swarming flowing. waves of flowing <laughs> rats. <laughs> flowing water like rats. Yeah, you, well, didn't, you didn't like attack people in it. You had to sort of arrange rat murders. Yes. But that all changes now oh, okay. uh, because the kids are a little bit older and stronger uh, so they have new abilities, there's a crossbow and Hugo has the power to control rats which oh, is good. useful, <laughs> he should have mentioned that in the first game probably. Yeah, yeah um, all those times I got swarmed by rats and he yeah. just stood there, stood by and watched, yeah. laughing. Hugo. Maybe he, if he can control rats, he did it. did it. Hugo did it. Um, yeah. Reframe uh, the narrative. This looks, again, extremely bleak, visually stunning. If you like stealth games, and you like stealth games. I right? like stealth games, yeah. Um, it's very atmospheric. Yeah. Um, if you don't like rats, it might not be the game for you. Yeah, yeah, content warning. Rats are flowing like yeah. a river of vermin. Yeah, it's <laughs> so. a living river around your ankles. <laughs> I think this is generally what you want from a video game sequel, isn't it? Like the first one more is... More rats. <laughs> more rats, yeah. The yeah. first one establishes characters and a vibe and some mechanics, and then the second one just builds on it. I think yeah. that's what this game is looking to do, just build on the first one in every way, so... Yeah, yeah. this was a, a really good example of a sort of... It's not a AAA game, but it's not an indie game. It's like yes. the sort of B game in the middle that's still really good fun and has really good production values, yeah. but doesn't maybe make as big of a splash, but it's still definitely worth playing. Safe to say the first Mario plus Rabbids game was drastically better than anyone expected a tie-up between Mario and Ubisoft's Rabbids series to be, and yet this turn-based tactical shooter, very much in the mould of the XCOM games, turned out great. The sequel adds Rabbid, Rosalina and Bowser joining the fight. Oh, Andy, you've become quite calm. Mm, I've calmed down now. Uh, you played Mario Plus Rabbids, we both <laughs> did, right? Yeah, I, uh, I played almost all of it. I got very far and then it got really hard. Yeah, I also stopped at the end because it got too savagely hard. hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's with that? Yeah, that was it, odd. Will the sequel deal with the, the sequel, difficulty spike? The sequel will start as hard as the What does your little thing ends. say? Uh, it doesn't say that <laughs> by my little thing. He means right. my Google Doc. Yeah. <laughs> To be clear. <laughs> Just to be clear on this. <laughs> I think it's a nice presentation for that kind of tactical combat game because it makes it fun as opposed to all the others which are horrible and grim. Yeah, that's true. It's nice to have a sort of fun, whimsical one. And they were and the, the, the battles were broken up by puzzle sequences mm -hmm. and cutscenes that were pretty nicely animated and pretty funny. It had that yeah. sort of minions energy with yeah. the with the wacky with, rabbits. The wacky rabbit characters. Luigi yeah. was a sniper. Let's yeah, not forget. exactly. The birth of Sniper Luigi, our, yeah. our best running joke. Go on. Go on. Yes. 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 That's what you get, Luigi. So you get for popping out of cover. It's the second one. Sniping. Luigi. Sniping oh, from the sky. Oh, my God. Rayman's going to be in this one. So Rayman? If you were holding out hope. Well, it's Rabbids. It's not a Mario or a Rabbit. Rabbids originally was a spin off of Rayman. No one remembers this because, like, now Rabbids are only famous and popular because of their. Where does it end? Sam Fisher from Splinter Cell? Arno the... Dorian from Assassin's Creed. <laughs> Unity. Sam Fisher would make perfect sense. The Prince of Persia. The Prince of Persia. With time rewinding powers. You're going to add him in? Yeah. You're going to be able to rewind time using the scimitar of whatever? I don't think so. <laughs> IP bleed, that's the real problem. I IP bleed. IP bleedly. <laughs> Action RPG Gotham Knights follows Nightwing, Batgirl, Robin and Red Hood in a bid to restore peace to Gotham City following Batman's disappearance. Expect encounters with iconic DC villains and a great deal of levelling up, equipment slots, crafting and loot. 
Wow, Nightwing, Batgirl, Robin and Red Hood. Really <laughs> rolling out the superstars for this one. <laughs> well, it's like, it's a Gotham game. Batman's not there. Yeah. <laughs> the premise is... <laughs> but don't worry, these guys are like bad Batmans. <laughs> Four bad Batmen. Yeah, right. That's what they should have called the game. Four bad <laughs> Batmen. The status of characters aside, I think we all had our fingers burnt a little bit by Marvel's Avengers. Um, yeah. Which, is, so this is a similar type of. It's a similar type game. of game in that it is, you know, primarily story based, but minute to minute, there's going to be quite a lot of crafting equipment slots. <sighs> loot uh, grind. Loot grind. Yeah. There's yeah. things like elemental attacks. It's one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. one of those things where you have like a million, million slots on each character, and you have to like swap things out and craft things and go find blueprints and basically make all the numbers go up. And if that all sounds appealing to you... Maybe it does. And it must sound appealing to someone, because there are, I feel like there are quite a lot of games like this. And, <laughs> yeah. And someone must enjoy Someone them. must, yeah. Someone must be liking this. Um, so, you know, uh, it, but it's that, it's that kind of thing. There is some cool stuff about it. It has uh, untethered co-op they're talking about. And what that means is that you can play... Uh, okay, completely separately to the other person. Yeah, just basically. Meet up you can be in the end. same co-op city, but like uh, one's over here, you know, solving That's a mugging. Cool. And one's over here, just, I don't know, stealing mugging cars someone. or whatever. <laughs> yeah, mugging yeah. someone, yeah, to re rebalance the crime yeah. stats, yeah. But then inexorably your paths are drawn together. Yeah, so that, uh, that, sounds, that sounds kind of fun. Yeah. Um, I would like to be pleasantly surprised by this one. Okay. Full stop. <laughs> Gaming's Most Fabulous Witch is back at last in October as Bayonetta appropriately lands on the Switch three days before Halloween. Expect new abilities like the power to take direct control of demons, but generally more of the same outrageous gleeful combat that the first two games got so absolutely right. Yeah, great. Bayonetta 3. Yep, yeah. great. Love Bayonetta. Yeah. Yes. Don't need to say much more about no. Bayonetta than that, but it's one of those amazing platinum action games. Yeah. Where you just do incredibly stylish things to demons and angels and then do a cool pose. I think if you're... And then it goes, you got a D rank. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah you suck. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, wow, I just you're did like, the wow, coolest thing in cool history. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, you like, actually suck a bayonet. Yeah, actually, the letters don't go that far down. Yeah, yeah. Um, you got a stone award. <laughs> If you're familiar with Bayonetta, then you know what you're going to be getting here. And if you're not familiar with Bayonetta, then you are now because you've seen some of the footage. You kind of get it, right? Yeah. Um, She's a sexy witch with guns on her shoes. Yeah. Uh, although uh, this game features a mode called Naive Angel Mode, uh, which puts Bayonetta's clothes on in the bits where otherwise her clothes I would see. come off. Generally, when she does big powers, her clothes sort of... Well, her clothes are made of her clothes hair. Clothes are made of... Yes. And so uh, she has to use her magic hair to do her big moves, like a big yes. hair leg will come and kick so, someone. So you see there's simply no way that she could do that and also and be wearing clothes. clothes. But now there is, uh, so you can turn on naive angel mode if you want. Perfect. My big question is, what old jazz standard, largely themed around the moon, are they going <clears> to use this time? Because the first game was all had like Fly, fly Me to, to the, the moon, moon, playing almost yeah. constantly. Second one, Moon River. Yeah. Blue Moon of Kentucky. Blue Moon, probably, that's yeah. it, yeah. <laughs> A blue moon to keep on a shining bright. Together. I'll be back to my baby tonight. Blue moon. Moon, moonwalker. Moonwalker. It's not a song. It's a video game. <laughs> but maybe the entirety of that could play every yeah. level in the background. <laughs> Just in window picture in picture. Yeah. It's a let's play of moonwalker. Blue, blue moon. That's one. Which yeah. Billy Holiday. Blue maybe. Moon. Yeah. Blue moon. So there you go. Standing da, 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 da. Alone. Perfect. There you go. Sort it out. Ghostbusters. Busting makes me feel good? Not if I'm playing the ghost, it doesn't. And one of you will be. In 4v1 multiplayer game Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed. So this game is by Illphonic, ah. whose games you are extremely familiar with, Andy. Yes, they made Friday the 13th, mm -hmm. um, which was good. The shtick is that uh, you're on a team of four Ghostbusters, and another person is playing as the ghost, and you are against each other, because obviously one must bust t'other. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so basically sometimes you get to play as the ghost, the ghost is super strong. Uh, they're quite good at balancing, bal the balancing act, right? Of, um... uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. So I think this is probably hopefully going to be an opportunity to, d to play that kind of game, but in a way that isn't hor horrible. <laughs> in like, a way that doesn't involve people having farming equipment shoved down their throats. That we know of. Uh, True. Yeah, we haven't seen the full game, only yeah. some Answer gameplay trailers. Answer me this though, will it feature the likeness of Dan Aykroyd? Uh, it will, as oh. well as Ernie Hudson. Ah, oh, Ernie Hudson, good. Mm. Not Murray or Raymond. The Wikipedia page uh, says it features the likenesses and voices of Ernie Hudson and Dan Aykroyd. So I think from that we can infer that that's it yeah. for the Ghostbusters likenesses. Um, right. well, uh, it, good, win good to see Winston. Yeah. It's aiming to be quite 
approachable, uh, I think, you know, like easy to pick up, hard to master, I think is the, the vibe they're yeah. going for. And it's got a sort of colourful, goofy uh, aesthetic. Yeah. No, it sounds great. I yeah. really enjoyed Friday the 13th. Any, any games that are that sort of asymmetrical multiplayer are fine by me. Scorn, the first-person biopunk survival horror game, might just claim the title of most horrible game ever. Inspired by visual artists like H.R. Geiger, you control a skinless humanoid on a nightmarish alien planet. So are you familiar Games with are game? back! Games are back, everyone! Folks. Great you're news! A, and you're a skinless humanoid in them now. Yeah. Uh, um, this game was announced years and years and years yeah, ago. Yeah, I remember the trailer and I remember thinking, well, that looks unpleasant. Yes, yes. Uh, it leans heavily into the fleshy... Uh, but, but, like, there is a... Leans heavily into the fleshy. Le <laughs> let me, yeah, let me finish that sentence. It leans heavily into the fleshy horror body horror uh, body horror kind of kind of vibe yeah um, I mean, kind of Cronenbergian yeah they they've basically I think deliberately given away very very little of what you actually do in this game and it's all just more kind of flavor like trailers about you know teasing that fleshy the, flavor that delicious fleshy fleshy fle 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 games, <laughs> games are back what we do know is that you're kind of searching for answers about the game world, and also we know that there is a first-person shooter element. You are going to have weapons, so it's kind of like Doom meets Bloodborne. Oh, cool! I think is, is kind of maybe the best way to sum it up, at least yep. based on the trailers, which again are giving away very little. Doug Bradley, aka Pinhead from Hellraiser, oh, narrates yeah. the trailer. So there you go, kid. Does he still have pins in his head? Or? <laughs> That's mostly what he says, yeah. <laughs> Why? He says, on a planet, ow! <laughs> Get these pins out my head. I'm caught on the foam. Oh, there's one in my nose, it went even deeper in. Yeah, they said it was just for the makeup test, but <laughs> they're still in. It was 30 years ago. Resident Evil Reverse was supposed to launch alongside Resident Evil 8, but got significantly delayed. Never mind, it's here this October. It's a multiplayer shooter featuring characters from throughout Resident Evil's history. Andy, you have played this because there was a, an open beta, right? Yeah, there was a beta. Um, we've got a video on the channel of me and Mike playing it from April last year. Last year? Yeah, so it's been a, I mean... <laughs> wow. Is it just a thing you get for free if you have Resident Evil Village? Or? Yeah, Resident Evil Village, aka Resident Evil 8. If you own that already, you can download this for free. Okay. Um, if you don't, then you have to pay for it. Uh, it's okay. on Steam listed at like 25 quid. 25 pounds? Yeah, 25 pounds. You don't feel like it's that I don't not of... think it is worth 25 pounds. It was a sort of fun diversion. So the way, the way it's set up is um, you choose like a Resident Evil survivor, like you can be Leon Kennedy or Jill Valentine or Claire Redfield. Mm -hmm. These sorts of folks, and then you run around trying to shoot each other. Each of the characters has got like different <laughs> abilities productive. and yep. stuff. Like Hunk, the um, uh, the special ops team member, he can turn invisible. You know, those sort of, yeah. Claire sure. Redfield has an electric trap, and as you go around, you find these vials of like virus, like pots of virus lying around that you sort of just Yummy. eat those. Yeah, and then <laughs> when you die you turn into a monster. And the more virus pots you picked up, the better... The like, better a monster better you a monster, yeah. So if you haven't got much virus, you turn into a sort of big flailing jelly baby kind of character. Okay. Uh, but if you've take, if you've drunk loads of virus, you can become like the tyrant or, um, oh, cool. you know, uh, Jack Baker from Resident Evil 7 with his chainsaw, uh, things like that. So right. it's, it's kind of diverting and, and fun. This sort of thing you could jump on for a few games in your lunch break, but it is it really is a sort of in addition to Resident Evil Village. It's not the sort of thing I think is probably worth getting standalone. But if you already have Village, it's just an extra thing for you for free. Okay. So those are seven of the games coming out in October. Back, and the, folks. of those, the the game, of the games that are back, which one are you most excited about? Oh, for? the games, the games, they're all back, aren't they? They're all back. And that's what I love about it. They're um, all bloody back. I think probably I'll pick up Mario and Rabbids for the old Switch. Um, yeah. It's a very good sort of long train journey kind of game. Oh yes, I, I hope for a flight. Yeah. yeah, maybe I was just doing it wrong and like optimizing my team badly, but I really did hit a brick wall <laughs> difficulty <laughs> towards the end of it. So yeah. maybe it'll be a bit better balance for casuals like me this time. Yeah, hopefully. Well, for me, you forgot to choose Bayonetta, so I'll have that one. Have it. Yes. Have I it. think we'll probably play the Ghostbusters game on the channel as well, particularly yeah. as Halo Stream is coming up. Yes, of course. Um, although, would you not be interested in playing a gruelling slog through 14th century France? Games are back, folks. <laughs> What's the, yeah, what, 
what's the gameplay fun in that one? How, the... how many fun points out of ten would you give it? Uh, I would give it uh, four fun rats out of a possible five fun rats. That's good. So, yeah. That's a really good score. Uh, <laughs> all right. If you can think of any games coming out in October that you're really excited about that we missed, why not drop a mention of them in the comments to help your fellow internet travellers who are also look just looking for some things to play, folks, because games are back, back. right? Um, thanks for watching. So back. Games are back. Rejoice. Amicia and Hugo are back for another gruelling slog through 14th century France. <laughs> <laughs> so that sounds... Games are back, everyone. <laughs> Great news. <laughs> How many levels does it have, though? What's the fun factor? Got one level. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> level one, fourteenth century France. <laughs> Difficulty <laughs> grueling. <laughs> oh, <f> okay. <laughs> oh damn it. Oh no. It's a bad start. We're a terrible start. Keep all this in, John, if you want. <laughs> Amicia and Hugo are back for another gruel. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> is, this just... the, is this the rats? Is this the kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, the, 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 kids, it's the kids with rats, okay. John. Yeah, <laughs> it's the game about... where the children were eaten right. by rats. Think about those poor children scared of rats. That's a very serious. Don't part, say I mean. stuff like that, John. Making it funny. <laughs> You're putting it more in contrast with the exciting intro. I'll just do it in blocks of words. Okay. Amicia and Hugo are back for another gruelling slog through 14th century France in a Plague Tale Requiem. This stealth, action, this stealth action game looks visually stunning and is a sequel to surprise hit A Plague Tale Innocence, which impressed players with its... <laughs> which impressed... <pl> <laughs> which impressed... Which, Im which impressed players with its rat physics. <laughs> Jesus. So, the games are back. And, uh, games, great, great news. The games are back. Look, I generally <laughs> try and list them in sort of chronological order. Maybe this, maybe this was a slightly bleak one to open. <laughs> oh Look, the thing is... <laughs> the thing is, games are back. <laughs>